agriculture and the PS, the Honorable Mithikali Nturi, were in Zambia, which produces maize, and there's no maize available. The only maize that is available in South Africa, and we are in competition with Angola and Rwanda for the same maize. The maize in Brazil, bringing it here because of the distance, the cost is too high. We decided as a government that the government is not going to import any maize directly because we don't want corruption. And we, the government doesn't want to get involved in importation directly because we don't want scandals. That is uh, the deputy president last night explaining that um, there's no maize anywhere in the world. What is available is too expensive, sort of explaining why the prices of unga remain high in the country, but also appealing to farmers in Eldred and other areas in the western part of the country to release all they have in stock, and that would be in opposition to reduce uh, the cost of maize flour to about 140 shillings per 2 kg bag. Horrible Mboe. What are your thoughts? Because the promise was that um, the cost of living would be addressed. The strategies that we've seen is investment in subsidies um, on fertilizer. They call it uh, production subsidies, taking away the consumption subsidies. Your side of politics has been agitating against uh, the government on this particular issue. Are you seeing any possible solutions that you'd want to give to the government to implement and make life better? Yes, um, the first thing I would uh, advise this government is to stop being fixated uh, with the former president Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. I mean, even just now, before we went on, uh, on a break, the Honorable Koech was busy uh, blasting Uhuru, who is six months out of office already, and uh, blaming him for things that occurred when his own leader was a deputy of Uhuru's. So I think it's important that, uh, and that's why I'm saying, let us learn to take responsibility so that we can move forward. And taking responsibility also means that the deputy president has to be careful what he tells the masses. You know, you cannot start telling people, uh, you, ca you cannot tell people there is no hope. You know, that's what he needs to be advised. Don't tell people there is no hope. Find solutions and tell people how you're going to solve their problem. When you tell people there is no maize, and maize in uh, South Africa, there is competition, we can't get it. Maize in uh, Brazil is too expensive. We will not import it. We don't want to get our hands dirty. And people are suffering. People are dying of hunger. I mean, it's unfortunate. So I, I want to say that uh, for me, uh, I think the, the, the prioritization of this government is wrong. I believe the time when they say they will not subsidize uh, consumption, mm -hmm. they misunderstood what, uh, what, what, what that is all about because there are times, you know, extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. You remember during the period of COVID-19, Uhuru Kenyatta, whom they keep blasting all the time, realized that the country was going through trouble and he, he subsidized education. So education, uh, secondary education dropped by almost 50%. Uh, he also subsidized uh, food and, and, and the cost of maize flour went down. And it may, be, it may, may have been done in a very haphazard manner so he didn't uh, succeed very well, but the intention was noble and it was good. I think that's what we need to think of. That right now, uh, we are going through drought. People, we, in some of our, some parts of this country, like where we come from, we haven't seen rain for quite a while, and we are not harvesting anything. So it's important that the government puts its house in order and realizes that these citizens need to be fed. These hustlers, even the ones in Ukambani, need to be fed. Because they said their subsidy program was abused. How do you suggest um, they take care of those that are suffering? I think they need to find and, and provide food for them. And, 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 and some, I think, the idea of subsidy under certain circumstances is not wrong. And let me tell you, I also realize that uh, they seem to not understand what consumption and production is. Because when you say you will not, uh, you will not, um, you will not subsidize uh, you know, consumption, mm -hmm. and then you say that uh, fuel is consumption, and electricity is consumption, that is completely wrong. Because fuel and electricity are used for production. So if you don't subsidize the cost of, of, of fuel and, 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 and electricity, then the cost of production goes up. So really, it's, it's, it's a, I think their, their, their understanding of these uh, economics is actually very warped. And that's why they kept talking about bottom up. And but, the only thing that's Shana going Bobby, up is prices of cost of living. If you had to look at um, the current situation in the country when it comes to revenue um, matters, are you seeing a possibility of shifting certain resources from either recurrent expenditure or development expenditure and put it to financing what you're calling um, fuel, electricity, 
food. You, you know, you know, Sam. In uh, in any, there is no budget that cannot be changed. Eh? And what people have to look at is uh, what is what is hurting us now. What do we need to do now? The the most important thing from where I come from, Sam, is we need to feed our people. I mean, every day you go to the constituency and the people are hungry. And they come up in large numbers because they're hungry. And a hungry person is, a, is an angry person. That is why I'm telling you, even on the 20th, when we start marching towards state house, all Kenyans will be with us. Because they must, be, they must find a solution for, pep, for the people. So I think uh, it is possible that, uh, and, and some look, eh, mm -hmm. as, as we are fighting about this, and it's good that you've raised the issue of revenue, uh, you saw that uh, the, the, the budget to run the president's office has gone up by about $9 billion. And yet, that is money just to pay the people hanging around the president's office and maybe tea and mandazi in the offices and those prayers that you do there on a daily basis. Ser seriously, I think we need, to, we need to get our priorities right. We need to provide money so that we can be able to feed our people. Because if we don't feed our people, and particularly the small ones, because what happens is that uh, if the children don't get proper diet now, then the development of their mental consciousness will not be will not be proper. So I think it's important that we support the the, 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 the the subsidy for food for this period. It will not last forever. I think we'll have rains. We'll probably harvest after a while. Then at that point we can go back to normal. But right now we need to feed our people. Horrible Wandeto. So when you listen to the deputy president last night uh, and the reality that uh, we've witnessed in the six months, of course the inflation at some point um, went down, but it's now back on its upward trend. I think in February it was at about 9.2 percent, um, and Kenyans are feeling that pinch. Do you have any suggestions on how to get out of that? Um, he talks about returning the subsidies. Some experts have said this is not the right thing to do at such a time. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think uh, some uh, where I agree with uh, Robert, or the extent to which I agree with Robert, is that uh, obviously the country is, um, the cost of living is high. There is no one who has denied that. The president, the deputy president, everyone has been, has been fairly honest that, uh, that, 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 the, that the cost of living has been high. We are facing the worst drought in uh, 40 years, um, and we are where we are. I think where maybe I differ uh, with Robert is in terms of how we address uh, uh, this issue. And uh, one way would be to put this matter in perspective. For example, the matter of maize, which you know the, the Deputy President highlighted yesterday and talked about the, the, the global uh, challenge you know, with availability of uh, maize. And it's not just maize, this uh, extends to things like uh, sunflower, uh, it extends to commodities such as wheat, because of the global disruptions that, uh, that you know have been there. Uh, some, I don't know whether you know Ukraine, where there is obviously a, a raging war, is the second highest uh, producer of corn after the United States. Um, when the United States does about 19, metric, uh, 19 million metric tons, I think they do about 4, 4, 4, 4, million, uh, 4 billion metric tons of, uh, of, of corn. So there is, there is a whole disruption of, uh, of, of the availability of uh, most of these agricultural uh, commodities. Mm -hmm. and, uh, as we speak, in the U.S., and I was talking to somebody uh, there yesterday, they are also complaining about the same things that we are having here. Farmers, by the way, are shutting down some of their farming enterprises because they cannot afford the, uh, you know, the, the cost of feed. Uh, eggs, uh, even in the U.S., are at an all-time high. So some of these challenges that we are facing here, it is very easy to come and simplify them here and say, oh, since William Ruto took uh, office uh, three months ago, you know, the, the, the cost of this and the cost of this, but we must put them in, in, you know, in perspective of what is happening globally. Globally, because that's why we come to a show like this one, mm -hmm. so that even as we give Kenyans hope, we also give them solid hope. You know, in terms of this is what is happening. This is uh, this is this is the perspective in which we you know we are in. If you look at the cost of fuel again, it's, it's again a huge global issue, and we are not even sure where this is going. Uh, uh, some going forward, uh, because uh, you, you know uh, the, the challenges with the dollar strengthening every day. The dollar right now, you know, is anywhere between uh, uh, one thousand. 32 and 40, depending on who you ask, we don't know the direction is going to go. I think what we need to do, and this is what the government has been doing, is first of all to say, how do we get long-term solutions to this problem? Because today we could do a quick fix. Mm -hmm. We could do a quick fix. Uh, but the long-term solution is ensuring that as a country, we improve our sustainability on food, 
yeah and that is why uh, personally i still support the issue of uh, of you know uh, the, the the production subsidies that is something we mu we must do but uh, in the in the short term the government is already doing things in terms of uh, uh, allowing uh, importation of duty free maize and that has brought some relief if you look at what has happened you know the cost of unga uh, has moved down from about 230 to about but is saying that there's no money anywhere in the world that, that's why it's not maize, coming no? in the, there is there is a serious shortage of maize all over the world. So prices are going up. I mean, what he was saying is right that if you now bring maize in from Brazil, traditionally you know maize from outside was always cheaper. Actually, you know we used to keep it out so that we support our we support our farmers. The essence of that right now, Honorable is uh, because you're saying that the cost of food will go down, but it was to go down because the imports are to come in. But the imports are not coming in because the deputy president says there's no maize anywhere in the world and what is available is expensive. So it looks like we don't have a solution. No, we do. What, what you're saying that is, is, is that the, the solution is a long-term one, okay? Mm -hmm. Growing our own food. But what we are saying in the short term, the government has allowed importation of duty-free maize. That is, that is, that is public. We're not, as much as we say there is no maize, of course there will be some litro found here and there. It will be expensive. But we also have our own local maize, which I think uh, you had the deputy president saying they have been calling upon uh, you know, farmers who could be holding any stocks of maize. Right now it's up at about 6,000 shillings a bag to ensure that they sell it you know, out there mm -hmm. so that we can be able to give some, uh, you know, the millers can have some adequate stocks. And uh, based on those actions, we are saying that the cost of actually uh, uh, unga has come down to about 170, 180 shillings, yeah? Mm -hmm. We know it is still not where we would like it to be, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you know also the food situation around the world changes. Today we are saying maybe you could, be, you, could, you could find a country maybe like Zambia, they're about to harvest. So in another one month or two, you find again there is a steady supply of, of grain coming from, from, from some place. So what we are saying is that uh, right now, the situation could be a little bit uh, uh, difficult. Any farmer who has maize locally, we urge them to bring it out and sell it out there so that, uh, you know, the millers have, uh, have good supply. Okay. But also, we urge our farmers to prepare their farms. We, we are hoping we'll get rains. The subsidized fertilizer is out there so that we can prepare ourselves to have our own sufficient food, you know, by, you know, mid of this year. Very interesting. There are some few things that you said about Ukraine and its um, rank in terms of uh, wheat and corn. Oh, you actually spoke about corn. I don't think it's accurate. We're getting some figures that are not exactly the same as you said. But anyway, um, Honorable Okelo, what shall we do? You're marching to State House next week on Monday? <laughs> But um, well, I know that will come later. We are talking about this. Yes, this yes. Maze you're fiasco. protesting. You're protesting the cost of living. Do you have any uh, tangible solutions that you may want to advance? Uh, allow me firstly to say that my brother Honorable Mbu is serving his third term in Parliament. Uh, Honorable Nelson and I are doing our second, and we wish our brother <laughs> who just came in to also continue uh, to serve. The main reason why leaders get elected is the degree of hope that they sell to the electorate. The moment you express pessimism, mm -hmm. then you lose it. Because why would they then present somebody who is as pessimistic as they may sound or as they may be? So you have to sell uh, a high degree of hope uh, to the hopeless. Now, a deputy president in the name of Rigathi Gachagua comes about to say, that there is no maze, and I'm sorry, that is the truth. You are the encourager in chief, and you are painting a grim picture to a country that is already very hungry. I remember during the 9-11, when terrorists attacked uh, the U United States of America, Bush, President George W. Bush Jr. came out and sold a lot of hope in the midst of mourning, you know, gnashing of teeth, they had a lot of hope of a better America in future. That is the work of any leadership. You don't come out to say, by the way, there's no food. Even in our families, at a mundane level, in our households, mm -hmm. you cannot come out, out and tell the children that, you know, we are staring at death. Uh, from the look of things, there is no food in this house. You never say that. You know, you give them hope of a better future. But uh, when I listened to- And what do you do to being truthful? Uh, there is the element of truth and there is the incision of hope. You have to inspire hope to a country. Uh, so whereas he wants to claim to be very truthful, 
then what happens to people who are already downtrodden? But that is, what I wanted to say, Sam, mm -hmm. is that um, uh, from the look of things, you see a government that was not ready to lead from the look of things. Because if, 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 if somebody who is proactive occupies that office, then you do what is necessary in order that the country can, you know, ca can thrive. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he mentioned something that uh, the, the CS for Agriculture, Honorable Linturi, lives in the plain, literally, mm -hmm. changing his clothes from the plain, hunting for maize uh, everywhere. And I do not know what the ambassadors that we have in those countries <laughs> are doing. Why send Linturi, where you have an ambassador, who can just look for maize around, buy, and bring? So, but, but that tells you that there is a bigger problem uh, that we have to go through as a nation. But again, you may want to ask, what happened to the strategic grain reserve that this country has always had? At what point did we exp uh, you know, exploit uh, those reserves, and who ate them? Because there's a lot of money budgeted annually mm -hmm. uh, to you know, put a buffer uh, in our stores to help address uh, issues such as the ones we are going through now. So again, uh, it is not true that there is no maize. Of course, there's a lot of maize in Tanzania. There's a lot of maize in Uganda. There's maize in Mozambique. There's maize in Zambia. There's maize in South Africa. We have maize all over the place. But now, I want you to listen to me pensively as an authority who sits in agriculture committee. We have 166 millers in this country. These 166 millers were given work by the immediate regime to be bringing uh, tax-free food or tax-free maize into the country. Out of which, by the time President Uhuru was leaving office, they had been paid four billion shillings. And there was, uh, a debt of 3.2 billion shillings. Now, that 4 billion shillings was paid to the millers, courtesy of Article 223 of the Constitution, where you can pay awaiting parliamentary approval. Now, when Parliament reconvened and Ruto and his company went around buying members of Parliament, and they are still doing it up to now, <laughs> but no one has approached me. I don't know why. Focus. Fo oh, you focus. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so their focus means I cannot be bought, which is very good. All value. And of course, I cannot be bought. <laughs> so anyhow, so when, when Parliament reconvened, in order to regularize the 4 billion shillings, they refused. Up to now, that 4 billion shillings has not been regularized. Aside from the fact that 3.2 billion shillings has not been paid to the millers, 166 in number. Now, the millers are saying mm -hmm. that if we are not going to be paid our money, we are bringing no food in Kenya. We are importing no maize in Kenya. That is the truth of the matter. All this you are hearing, there's no maize everywhere, uh, you know, apart from Brazil uh, and South Africa, and the cost of transportation is higher. Government has never gotten involved in transporting uh, What food. is the reason for refusing to regularize the money? Because Uhuru. it is Uhuru Kenyatta who did it, mm -hmm. and the, that was part of the maize subsidy. So when uh, Ruto came into office, he scrapped the, the, the subsidy, the, the food subsidy, mm -hmm. and that, part, that was part of, uh, you know, that money. So there is a lot of maize everywhere you'd want to go to, Tanzania, Uganda, Mozambique, wherever, Malawi, wherever. Mm -hmm. But because the millers are on a serious go slow, mm -hmm. they are saying we are not bringing in food. So now the government wants to take the role of millers by putting somebody into the plane looking for that maize, buy it, I don't know whether cash, put it in some ship and bring it back to Kenya. And I don't know whether the government has enough millers because millers mill that uh, maize, pack it and sell it. So there's a lot of disconnect uh, you know, in, in the entire scheme. But this is what we would, we would want to do going forward. Mm -hmm. 
I, I think with the prevailing drought, we have to run away from you know, rain-fed agriculture. Mm -hmm. We must embrace irrigation. We have to embrace mechanized agriculture. Otherwise, we are going to get into a huge hole that we may not be able to come out of. So, okay. that, okay. Well, I don't know what to do with the figures that you just provided there because on 20th of February, there was a statement by the Cereal Millers Association. They were saying that they sold um, flour worth 4.3 billion shillings and only 1.7 billion shillings was paid, leaving an outstanding balance of 2.5 billion shillings. You're speaking about 4 billion shillings that were paid that needed to be regularized and a debt of 3.2 billion shillings. I don't know how those figures reconcile. Well, you, when, when the millers came out around to talk about a consignment, that was a particular consignment. Mm -hmm. The four billion shillings relates to what had been brought in before the election. And that was already paid for, only that it had not been passed uh, by parliament in light of Article 223 of our constitution. The, the four billion I I know of that was in the supplementary budget was the four billion that was paid around uh, the, the first week of August, just before the election. So mm -hmm. just when correct, correct, is correct. Is it the same thing you're talking about? No, it's a diff that was now a different consignment that you're talking about. And as I said, they have an outstanding of 3.2 billion shillings that they are yet to be paid. They already supplied, uh, brought in maize into the country. And these are businessmen who had already incurred okay. costs uh, on the same. Uh, and the government is saying, firstly, we are not regularizing the four billion, but besides that, we are also not honoring uh, the 3.2 billion shillings owed to these millers. So we are in a, a quandary okay. because of a disorganized regime that does not want to respect people's I, I hear you, but I'm just wondering why the millers would give a statement on February 20th, talk about 2.5 billion shillings, yet the figure should be 3.2 billion shillings plus something else. Honorable Koech, um, what are your thoughts? Because, I, again, um, we are very good at elaborating on what the problem is, but very thin on finding solutions. <laughs> let me, let me uh, Sam, and I think uh, you need to regulate time because Jared Okello will never stop uh, talking. You have to tell him when to stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, let me tell you something. That uh, First of all, as we ask all these questions, number one, how did we get ourselves there? It is very easy to say, oh, you know, this is what is happening. We need uh, to go with tuferias and spoons to state house. I don't know to do what. But we never ask, how did we get ourselves in this mess? Number one. And, and, and I think Jared Okello was actually short of, Jared Okello has answers at the same time. He has a way of criticizing. And he sp he, when he's speaking, you can get the answers from him. He said, we have had a persistent drought. That is where the problem is. We've had an unexpected long uh, uh, dry spell in this country. And number two, even where the Ministry of Agriculture had projected that we will be harvesting 27 million bags, mm -hmm. it's come down to almost uh, last season, 21 million bags. So what do we do as a country? And how did we get ourselves there? Number one, 8.5 billion shillings, and I want you to Google as I talk, was released just before election to subsidize Unga. Jared and Robert are very insistent on that particular uh, 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 section of saying subsidy because it benefited individuals. I can tell you at this point that uh, people are going to go to jail. 8.5 billion subsidy was never used to pay the millers. It, was, it went into people's pockets. It financed the politics of this country of uh, Azimio in last general election. Mm -hmm. The problem that we have is not to subsidize uh, production, uh, to subsidize consumption. We have to subsidize in the long term production. Let me tell you, the fertilizer was 7,000 shillings. It has now come down to 3,600 and below. Unga was selling at 230 shillings. We are now, like on the one data did say, we are now at 170 uh, Kenya shillings, or around there. Where is it, that? We expect it to come down even lower. Where, where? Why are you buying Unga at 170 shillings? It has come down from 230, has it not? Where that is a it, fact. Where? If you where? do, where? If you, if you, in all the supermarkets, is available. I, can take, I can take a picture today. Even in, the, in fact, as we are talking, send someone to the supermarket right now. It is 170, 175 in all the supermarkets. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what is happening is that 
as a country, we are trying to, the president has tried to have a supplementary budget that is people-centric, a supplementary budget that is going to meet the needs of the people to reduce the cost of price. I will tell you, and as you look at the central bank uh, food inflation rate, and these people will not tell you. I'll just read you the figures mm -hmm. so that you understand where we've come from and where we are as a country. I don't want people to come to the show and lie. The inflation rate, uh, food inflation, as uh, as at, uh, as at no, October 2022, mm -hmm. overall was 9.6%. But on food, it was 15.8%. November 2022, overall was 9.5%. And uh, the same November on food, it was 15.4%. Mm -hmm. December 2022 was 9.1%. Food, 13.8%. In January 2023, Inflation rate was 9.0% to 12, uh, and on food it was 12.8. There has been a drastic, systematic fall on the food uh, inflation mm -hmm. up to this point. Now, do you have figures for February? February? We have. I've not found uh, the ones for February, but okay. it's just like on the Central Bank of Kenya's inflation uh, report. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sam, we have to tell these people and call uh, their bluff. There, has, there was misuse of funds where it was supposed to have been targeted to the farmers and the millers. It was never spent on those places. The regime that they are fighting about, of the, co about the cost of living now is a regime that went on wanton borrowing. You can see how corrupt they were. That on 26 minutes, a WhatsApp conversation resulted in 15 billion being disbursed to be used by these people on an election. And that is why we are in all this mess. The fiscal discipline that President William Root has introduced in his government is to make sure that all the insecurities that we suffer from in this country can be catered for in the long term. It cannot happen in six months. Honorable, uh, the Deputy President was very forthright. The maize that we are supposed to get from Brazil and Argentina to import it to this country is going to be more expensive mm -hmm. than if we sourced it with within the region. And that is why the minister has been deployed to make sure that we can get and source maize in the short term and hope that in the next season, fertilizer is available for farmers. And I can g give you a very good report that all the chiefs were deployed, where we, the government will have been expected to spend four billion. All the chiefs were deployed and have been used to distribute the fertilizer to farmers. Farmers are very happy. We are waiting for the rains. Um, and I can tell you the rains, Shortly, as uh, you can see, the, the clouds are forming. We will have the rains. When we have the rains, this is not enough. We must now rethink and say, how do we have food security in this country? Galana Kulalu, mm -hmm. a huge farm that had been uh, reserved for plantation of maize to have uh, food security in this country. Can you imagine that the last regime had allocated themselves that land? It is an issue that we are again going to see people being, uh, being uh, 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 charged with responsibility on exactly what happened. The president gave instructions that everyone who was on that farm was sent out. Now, uh, Galana Kulalu, we have to think of how to irrigate our farms. If you look at the plan of the Kenya uh, Kwanzaa and its manifesto, there is so many uh, programs on construction of dams and macro dams. Tell me first why uh, there was a problem with the Tare Dam. With the way there was a problem with Boston Dam. All the dams that were supposed to have provided food security in this country, mm -hmm. somehow, last regime decided that they were not necessary. It is a very crude way of dealing with your political opponents. And that is why the president has come around and say, we are going to do dams. Even in Nyando, where it is permanently flooding, the home of Jared Okello, he will not say here, but they have food insecurity. We are going to sort this problem in his constituency. He never wants to address it, but we will do it. He can do mandamano with Kijiko and spare to state house, but I wonder to do what? And to get what we have to be very realistic I, I as a people, you. I, I hear uh, Sam. No, no, no. Even as they as they go to uh, state house, uh, like you said, and uh, even uh, be, before I go to state house, to speak on a vocal. I'll give you another opportunity. Okay, okay, but I just want to remember, like don't say everything before, at once. before he says state house. <laughs> remember last time when I was here, I told you Jared Okello will we'll, not. We'll get to that. Attempt to get to state but, but house first. <laughs> you, you know, you asked me to conduct an assignment here. You're, you're telling us that Tunga has uh, reduced its price from 130 to 170 shillings. Yes. Or well, they're about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much is it now? I have now? looked at two supermarkets. I've looked at um, Naiva Supermarket. Jogo is currently on offer at 179 shillings from 189. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pembe is at 208. Soko is at 207. 
uh, an on offer from 211 shillings. If you look at Carrefour, uh, the up, uh, Jogo is at 187, Pembe is at 190 shillings, uh, Soko is at 195, and one kg of Jogo is 99 shillings. That is in six months of Kenya Kwanzaa's government. No, no. Tell me where we were. And, and those are also, prim we and those are also premium brands, yeah? yeah. No, no, like, we, we, we are talking. We are talking about the Onga. You, you sent me to the supermarkets. This is what they have in the supermarket. Yeah, but you're giving me the high-end brands. Can you no, tell no. me also the Hustler brand? I have not given you, <laughs> I have not given you a, a, a premium some, brand. Some also remember that Post not everybody goes premium. to the supermarket. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other retail outlets. Yes, who are even cheaper than that. 230. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, at 120. Other you know, supermarkets are a bit organized. And when you talk yeah, about yeah, price yeah, controls, yeah. it is Prices easier to deal with supermarkets okay, okay. than other pay, pay the miller is the, the question. The uh, in fact, you should be asking where is the 8.5 billion shillings that was released to Munya just before elections? It was used on campaigns. Simple. 8 billion shillings. 8.5 billion was released for UNGA subsidy just before election. 8.5 billion. That is not factual. It, was it is factual. 8.5 billion. It was 4 billion and four billion. Millers acknowledged it. What was, four billion. I am telling you, the entire UNGA subsidy program was 8.5 billion. I can tell you that. In fact, as you continue with the interview, right. I will personally show you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you, you guys. Talk no, about you, what was released just yeah. before course. the election. What you are talking about is what was released. What was the amount for subsidy was 8.5 billion. Yeah. Why even the, why even we will not pay is because there are questions about it. There are questions about who was paid because this money was being wired to people's accounts. You know, Honorable when you quote a figure and said that 8 billion shillings was uh, released. And I tell you it's not released, then you tell me it was a marked for release. 8.5 billion was it? Was, no, not a marked for release. It was a marked for subsidy. Well, different things. 8.5 billion shillings, uh, uh, some. You know, I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get you that figure. Yeah. Because um, this is a report of the controller of uh, budget. And 4 billion shillings was meant to cater for the implementation of the maize subsidy program. And it was released on 4th of August 2022. 4 billion shillings, not yes. 8. Is that an entire UNGA subsidy program? I am telling you about what was released on the, the few okay. days to election, which is what you're talking about. How much? I think the question is how much of that yes, got was, to the millers? Yes. Well, they Let's even stay with the four, I, I sit in Let's the even stay with the four billion. They anyway. acknowledge receipt of that. But, but oh, four, there is something billion. that there's no, something Honorable Nelson hold on. has said let's, about let's people. Listen, just hold on. Let's listen to a clip here of. Um, um, yes, let's listen to it. If those people want to talk to us on matters development, mm -hmm. we are ready. But them coming to join government, no. We want the opposition to remain strong. We want them to agree with our people in the National Assembly. They agree and amend the Constitution, create the office of the leader of official opposition by law so that he gets resources, okay. so that he gets support, to provide oversight of a government. A strong opposition is a good thing for any country. All right, we'll be listening to other voices, especially from the Azimio Laomoja side, uh, but that's the deputy president responding. He's, he thinks that, uh, I don't know why you're smiling. He thinks that uh, all you want is a, a political handshake, that you want to get into government and destroy uh, the good uh, work that they are already doing, like happened with the President Uru Kenyatta um, after the handshake of 9th of uh, March 2018. It's been five years plus. Is that exactly what you are looking for? But w w what is, w what are you eyeing? What's, what's the end game for you? You know, some, let's begin first by talking about the handshake between Uhuru and uh, Raila. Uh, in the first place, that did not take us to government. And I think that needs to be made very clear. And, and everybody who keeps talking about uh, Raila in the last regime needs to tell us what office he occupied in that regime. Because Raila was uh, the, the, the in charge of infrastructure in Africa, a job that was uh, not related at all to Kenyan government. So every time they keep talking and, and put Raila in the middle <laughs> of, uh, of, the, of the last regime is unfortunate. Because tell me, uh, Gashagwa was involved in campaigning for UDA. Uh, in the last election, he's now the deputy president. If they borrow money, if they promise laptops, if the inflation goes up, if they are unable to deliver, 
Will he come back in 2027 and say that that was the Ruto's problem? You know, people have to be, start being honest. In fact, if you talk about honesty, I think the most dishonest people are these ones in this regime mm -hmm. that were part of the last regime who keep telling us that uh, we are the ones who messed up. And you know, even Nelson Kuech voted for Jubilee. He was in Jubilee with Raila and Ruto, you know, in the last regime. I was in Waipa in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in a coalition with the ODM in NASA. So we, we need to start becoming very, very honest about this thing. And you know, I've had the deputy president say that they want a strong opposition. It is interesting when they say they want a strong opposition, and the first thing they did after the election is that they quickly started buying members from the opposition so that they could bolster their numbers in parliament. So how are you going to have a strong opposition if you've bought off all the opposition uh, members and they're part of your system and part of your team? Mm -hmm. So I mean, the, the, the honesty, the honest debate needs to be, to be started now. Now, uh, what is it we want? Some. We, you know very well that uh, the 